Good morning and welcome to Crossroads with George Cavour. So good to welcome you this morning, the 7th of January. Morning, Victor. So good to welcome you, Carol. Hi. Good morning to each one of you. It's a beautiful day and God is on the throne. Praise God. On a hill far away stood an old rugged cross. One of my favorite songs. I trust each and every one of you are well today. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. Thank you for the night's rest. Thank you that you have wonderful things in store for us. Help us to put our trust in you. Help us to depend on you for everything. May your presence and your peace be our portion. For we pray and ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. I pray that the Lord will guide and encourage each and every one of us as we come to his presence this morning. Hi, Sarah. Good to see you in Bernardo. This morning, our Bible reading will be from the book of the prophet Jeremiah, chapter 7. Jeremiah, chapter 7, we'll be reading... I'd like to read uh, verse, uh, verse 1, uh, verse 1 to verse 4, uh, no, from verse 1 to verse 7, 7, and then verse 21 to 26, Jeremiah chapter 7, verse 1 to verse 7. And then verse 21 to verse 26. So if you've got your Bibles, turn with me to the book of the prophet Jeremiah. Many of you know that the prophet Jeremiah was a young man whom the Lord called. And he was so insecure and didn't believe that he had anything to contribute. Uh, but the Lord used this man profoundly and at a very critical period in the history of Israel. Uh, Jeremiah is called the weeping prophet. He felt deeply. He was empathic. And uh, when God asked him to prophesy, he would often, he would often be very emotional. And that should reassure us that there's nothing wrong with our emotions. Nothing wrong with our emotions. Uh, I uh, tend to be someone who is very uh, up here in my head. But the older I get, the more it's slipping down into my heart. So let's look at Jeremiah chapter 7, verse 1 to 7, and then verse 21 to 26. The word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord, stand in the gate of the Lord's house and proclaim there this word and say, hear the word of the Lord, 
all you men of Judah who enter these gates to worship the Lord. Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, amend your ways and your deeds, and I will let you dwell in this place. Do not trust in these deceptive words. This is the temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord. For if you truly amend your ways and your deeds, if you truly execute justice one with another, if you do not oppress the sojourner, the fatherless, or the widow, or shed innocent blood in this place, and if you do not go after other gods to your own harm, then I will let you dwell in this place in the land that I gave of old to your fathers forever. Verse 21. Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, add your burnt offerings to your sacrifices and eat the flesh. For in the day that I brought them out of the land of Egypt, I did not speak to your fathers or command them concerning burnt offerings and sacrifices. But this command I gave them, obey my voice and I will be your God. And you shall be my people and walk in all the ways that I command you, that it may be well with you. But they did not obey or incline their ear, but walked in their own counsels and the stubbornness of their evil hearts and went backwards, not forward. From the day that your fathers came out of the land of Egypt to this day, I have persistently sent all my servants, the prophets, to them day by day. Yet they did not listen to me or incline their ears, but stiffened their neck. They did worse than their fathers. The word of the Lord. So good to see each one of you and I hope you're all well. Jeremiah was a prophet and a prophet is someone who receives the word of the Lord. The prophet hears God's word, loud and clear. And then he is told to pass it on to a specific people. The prophet cannot add or detract from what has been given to him. Revelation is imparted to a prophet and he is then told that he has to give it to a particular individual or a group of people or to a town, a city or to a village. God's word came to Jeremiah from the Lord. What a profound truth that God loves to communicate God loves to reveal himself, and God does something about it. He communicates. Prophets are a very important resource in the life and witness of the church. It is sad that we in the institutional churches have failed to recognize this because we have so organized religion and so systematized our faith that there's very little maneuvering room for God to actually come in and get involved. Think of your morning services, your worship services on Sunday. It's so familiar. It's so routinized. A prophetic word would be an incredible disruptor 
to this routine. And we in the institutional church would not really know what to do if somebody stood up and said, thus said the Lord. But that's exactly what God's people are called to. We are called to be waiting upon the Lord. We are called to be sensitive to the Spirit of God. And God does reveal himself and communicate today in the year 2021 as he has been ever since the first century. Yes, my brothers and sisters, God has been revealing himself to God's people in the church. And for thousands of years before Jesus came, God had been communicating with Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, with Moses, Joshua, with King David, and Solomon. You know, it goes on and on and on. There's this brief period of about between four and five hundred years between Malachi and the writings of Paul, which are probably the earliest writings in the church. There was a profound silence. And Israel didn't hear God's voice. Praise God. God spoke with a bang when he sent his son Jesus into the world. Who gave us God's truth. My dear brothers and sisters. When God speaks we are called to listen attentively because God's word is life and light and it reveals to us things that we are not aware of. God's word speaks truth into our lives. God's word prepares us. God's word encourages us, informs us, educates us, empowers us, enlivens us. Yes, thy word is a lamp unto my feet. So when Jeremiah begins chapter 7 in verse 1 by saying, the word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord, this is not an ordinary word. This is the word of the Lord. In Hebrew, it's the word Debar Yahweh. And the word challenges Jeremiah. Stand in the gate of the Lord's house and proclaim there this word and say, Hear the word of the Lord, all of you in Judah who enter these gates to worship the Lord. If you're going to come in, to God's presence, if you're going to come into God's sanctuary, if you're coming here to worship and to honor God, then listen to this. Thus says the Lord your God, the, amend your ways and your deeds. Change your ways and your behavior. And then I will let you stay in this promised land. Do not trust in these deceptive words. This is the temple of the Lord. This is God's sanctuary. This is holy ground. And I am teaching you my truth. Change your ways, your attitudes, your values your behavior as you enter 2021. Reflect on your behavior and your attitudes and your values in 2020 and ask yourself the question, are you living the life that, that God wants you to live? Are you living according to God's word or are you living your own life in your own way? God, in verse 21 following, tells, speaks through his prophet Jeremiah, and he says, Look, 
you people have been offering sacrifices to me. But guess what? I'm so fed up of it that I've not been speaking to your forefathers ever since I brought them out of Egypt. Why? Because of their disobedience. Their callous attitudes to my word. I gave them this simple and clear command. Obey my voice and I will be your God and you shall be my people and walk in all the way that I command you. Verse 23. But this command I gave my them. Obey my voice and I will be your God and you shall be my people and you must learn to walk in all that I have commanded you that it may be well with you. But surprise, surprise! They did not obey or incline their ears, but walked in their own counsels and the stubbornness of their evil heart. Yes, my brothers and sisters, When God's word is revealed to us, we have a choice. We can receive it or we can reject it. God reveals his truth and we can see this dynamic engagement between God's people and God. God's word is delivered to his people by his servant, the prophet. And what is God complaining? He's saying, look, you have an incredible track record of disobedience. You people never pay attention to my word. Why? Because you think you know what is best for your life. You think you can take care of yourself. It's not only an assertion of autonomy, but it is veritably an act of rebellion. Those of us who live here in the United States have been watching these unseemly and horrific images. Of the crowds being egged on by a sitting president to go to the Capitol. And the crowds invaded that sacred space of democracy where the people's representatives have to do the work of the people. Yes, my brothers and sisters. Do not be seduced by personalities. Do not do what is unlawful, whoever says it, but pay heed to the voice of the Lord. My brothers and sisters, Jeremiah the prophet delivers a very candid message when he says, Your forefathers have rejected me, have spurned my revelations, have not paid heed to my command. Obey my voice and I will be your God and you shall be my people. Hi, Matthew. I hope things are good with you in Singapore. And Marlene, it's so good to have you from Italiate in the Arctic. I am always excited when I see brothers and sisters from the Arctic 
coming to our morning devotions. May God encourage you, speak to you, bless you and guide you. Hi John, so good to see you. He is a classmate of mine from Theological College many years ago. My brothers and sisters, I am speaking this new year in 2021 of the incredible need to pay attention to God's word, to wait upon the Lord, because we know that when we have God's word, we shall renew our strength and mount up with wings like eagles. But today in the book of the prophet Jeremiah, I listen to what God is saying. This was a simple command I gave my people. Obey my voice and I will be your God. We will have a relationship. It will be a living relationship that you have with the one true living God. But you completely have ignored, rejected, and failed to sustain this relationship on the basis of my covenant. Obedience is the hallmark of being a people that is set apart by God. It is the hallmark of a holy individual. It's proportionate to their obedience quotient. There is no such thing as partial obedience. God demands total and complete obedience, an alignment of God's heart and mind and will with your heart, mind and will. We live in union with God. Yes, my brothers and sisters. But sadly, look at verse 24 of Jeremiah 7. They did not obey or incline their ear, but walked in their own counsels and the stubbornness of their evil heart. They did not obey. They did not incline their ear. In other words, they didn't orient their listening, their attentive listening to the voice of God. Instead, they were so full of themselves that they walked in their own counsel, on the basis of their own understanding. A complete failure to even value the wisdom tradition of their people. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5, 6, and 7. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. Yes, but in everything, you acknowledge him and he will make your path straight. As we enter 2021, if you want God to make your path straight, you have to come close to God. You've got to come, you've got to wait upon the Lord. You've got to incline your ears and pay attention to God's word. You've got to obey God and there's got to be a material change in your behavior and a radical shift in your values. Yes, my brothers and sisters, I pray that God will bless you and keep you. And so, My prayer for you and for me is that we would learn from our Lord Jesus, who was a man who taught us 
how to be obedient to God, how to surrender to God, how to submit to the will of God. He is your role model and my role model. And I pray that the Lord will encourage you and keep you. As we enter this new year, January the 7th, the first seven days of this year, I pray God's rich blessings upon you. My prayer is that as we reflect on the life and teachings of our Lord Jesus, we come to the place of the cross, a place of surrender, a place of obedience. May God bless you and encourage you. I'm going to sing this wonderful song, The Old Rugged Cross. <clears throat> cherish the old rugged cross till my trophies at last I lay down I will cling to the old rugged cross and exchange it someday for a crown on that old rugged cross so despised by the world as a wondrous attraction for me for the dear lamb of god left his glory above to bear it to dark calvary so I cherish the old rugged cross Till my trophies at last I lay down I will cling to the old rugged cross And exchange it someday for a crown the old rugged cross I will ever be true to its shame and reproach gladly bear then he'll call me someday to my home far away where his glory forever I'll share so I'll cherish the old rugged cross till my trophies at last I lay down I will cling to the old rugged cross and exchange someday for a crown so I cherish the old rugged cross to my trophies at last I lay down I will cling to the old rugged cross and exchange it for someday for a crown 
Yes, my brothers and sisters, as we come before the Lord, we recognize that the cross of Jesus is the portal through which we have to enter into the blessings of the Lord. It's when we recognize the voice of God and we hear the call, follow me, we need to deny ourselves, turn our backs on the world, the flesh and the devil and surrender and submit to the word of God and seek to obey him in thought, word and in deed. God bless you, my brothers and sisters. And now may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with each one of you now and forevermore. Amen. I just wanted to mention, my friends, that uh, I have a YouTube channel. And so if you want your friends to be blessed and they are not members of Facebook or cannot are not my friends, you have two ways of sharing what you hear from me. One, you can share it on your wall so that your friends can hear and be blessed by God's word. Or you can redirect your friends to George I. Kavor on YouTube. And all my talks are now being posted on YouTube. I hope that if you go onto YouTube, you will watch it, you will subscribe to my channels because things that I don't do here on face, Facebook, I am going to be doing on YouTube. In the meanwhile, be blessed, stay blessed, and pass on your blessing to others. Hey, Augustine, God bless you and your family in Seoul, Korea. In the meanwhile, Keep smiling. Remember, God loves you and me and he has blessed us beyond our wildest imagination. And we are called to be a blessing to others. Bye-bye. See you tomorrow morning at 8.30 a.m.